Hello, so I'm going to give you a first look at ASRock Z790 Phantom Gaming Reptile, which is compatible with Intel's new 13th gen and also their older 12th gen processors. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed and take a closer look at it. So this is everything that comes with the motherboard in the box. So we've got our user manual, we've got a Reptide postcard, we've got a badge and a keycap, we've got two SATA cables, one has a straight end and one has a right angle connector, and then we've got five M.2 SSD screws. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, starting off at the bottom, working from left to right. First of all, we've got a HD audio connector. Next to that, we've got a UART connector. Take care not to mix this up with an ARGB header. Then we've got a chassis fan header, followed by a Thunderbolt add-in card connector. We've then got two RGB connectors. First of all, we've got a four pin 12 volt connector, followed by a three pin five volt ARGB connector. We've then got two USB 2.0 headers, with our post status checker LEDs just above this. We've then got another chassis fan header, followed by a clear CMOS jumper. And then we've got our power LED and speaker headers, followed by our system panel header at the bottom right hand side of the motherboard, where we're going to plug in our front panel connectors. Just above that, we've got a TPM header. Working up the right hand side of the motherboard, first of all, we've got six SATA connectors, giving us a total of eight on the motherboard. We've then got a forward facing USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. We've got another chassis fan header, followed by a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 front panel Type C connector. We've then got our 24 pin connector, followed by another chassis fan header. Working along the top of the motherboard, we've got another two ARGB ports, giving us a total of three on the motherboard. We've then got our CPU fan and water pump header. The CPU fan header is the one at the bottom. And then we've got two 8 pin EPS power connectors. Our fifth and final chassis fan header is just above our first M.2 SSD slot. The motherboard features a 14 plus 1 and plus 1 phase power design and we've got beefy aluminium heat sinks over the VRM. In the middle of the motherboard we've got our LGA 1700 socket and standard mounting holes. The motherboard has four RAM slots and will accommodate up to a maximum of 128GB of DDR5 at up to 6800 megatransfers per second overclocked. The motherboard has two by 16 size PCIe slots and it's good to see the top one has steel armour on it. The top slot is a Gen 5 slot with the PCIe lanes coming from the CPU. It will run in by 16 mode provided you haven't installed the drive in the Gen 5 M.2 slot. If you have, it will drop down to by 8 mode. The bottom by 16 slot is a Gen 4 slot and it will run in by 4 mode with the PCIe lanes coming from the chipset. At the bottom of the motherboard we've got a PCIe 3.0 by 1 slot with the PCIe lanes coming from the chipset. The motherboard features 5 M.2 SSDs and you'll notice we've got a really beefy heatsink over the top slot, marking it out as the Gen 5 slot. I'll go ahead and remove the heatsinks to give you a closer look at the slots. Taking a look at the top slot, you'll notice we've got an M.2 connector over to the right hand side, it's a Gen 5 by 4 slot. And there's also one over to the left hand side, which is Gen 4 by 4 slot. The PCIe lanes for both slots come from the CPU, but you're only going to be able to occupy one of the slots at any one time. And again, it's important to remember if you do install a drive in the Gen 5 slot, that's the one over to the right hand side, your top PCIe slot will reduce from by 16 to by 8 mode. The other three M.2 slots are Gen 4 by 4 slots with the PCIe lanes coming from the chipset. Just below the first PCIe slot we've got an M.2 key E slot to allow you to add a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. It's good to see the motherboard features ASRock's flexible integrated I.O. shield. Taking a look at our connectors we've got a DisplayPort 1.4 followed by a HDMI 2.1 port. Next to that we've got two antenna cutouts should you wish to add in a separate Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. We've then got six USB Type-A ports. The top two are USB 2.0 ports, followed by two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, followed by two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've then got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port, followed by two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. You'll notice these ports are a different color and ASRock has flagged these up as Lightning Gaming ports. 
They're designed to have your keyboard and mouse plugged into them, and as they come from different controllers, it's going to prevent any latency when you're gaming. Next to these, we've got a 2.5 gigabit LAN port. At the bottom, we've got our audio connectors, and the motherboard does support 7.1 channel HD audio and Nahimic audio. So I think this is a good looking motherboard with a lot of great features. I don't have any pricing information on it yet, but once I do have some links to the product on sale, I'll put them in the description so you'll be able to click on them and find out how much it's going to cost. And I'll be getting this into a build on the channel fairly shortly. So hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.